Dynasty the king, king. This episode of the Dynasty Exchange is brought to you by BetterHelp. Use code TRABISKY. If you or a loved one has been a victim of essentially the Steelers offense this season, like I have, in having to watch an inept quarterback uh, and an inept offense who doesn't seem to understand situational football, please just log on to BetterHelp.com, use code TRABISKY, and you can receive it. I'm, I'm totally kidding, but I wish I wasn't. Dylan, we're here. Thursday Night Football Reaction. We're not in playoffs. You know, we've, we've talked about that, you know, in Yacht Club, it hasn't gone our way. But there's still leagues where it matters. And there's still leagues where I was relying on my champion, George Pickens. And once again, it's going to be a night of me <laughs> saying it's not his fault. It's situational. Oh but, dude, this was so painful to watch. First of all, the Patriots did their part. The over-under for this game was literally 30 points. They hit that before, like, at the end of halftime. It was 10-21. I was like, okay. We got a little juice. Bailey Zappi, who I believe is the star of the night. Um, well, we could talk about Ezekiel Elliott as well. He did his part. The Patriots did enough to make this an interesting game for fantasy. And the Steelers come out here. And Mitchell Trubisky, man, like, I don't want to put it all on him because clearly the Steelers have struggled all season. But something is wrong. Something stinks in Pittsburgh. What's the problem? How do they fix it? And I'm just stuck with George Pickens for the next forever, which I'm okay with. I, I just that's one thing I don't understand. I just do not understand, and I don't think I will. We talked three times today. We did. Right. We talked three times about the show. And then every single conversation we had, George Pickens was brought up. And you asked me, you asked me, should I start George Pickens or Elijah Moore? Right. That was the that was the decision that you had decision that you had to make in one of your leagues. And mm -hmm. I told you to start Elijah Moore. You called yep. me back hours later. Tilting, full tilt. This was a full oh, tilt call. This was a completely. full tilt call. And you you basically, here's what I don't understand. Why did you ask me if you had your mind made up? No, it was just going through the process. No, no, no you, were not, you were not going to. Dude, let me ask you this. You have George Pickens. No, no, no. You have George in Pickens in every single league that, you ha that you're in, correct? No, I, I hedged in one, just one. Okay. Every other league, did you start him? Or is he in your starting lineup? Or no, did he yeah. start? Yeah, did you start him? Yeah, yes. Yeah. Exactly. So you had all intents and purpose for all. Yes, you had all intentions on starting. No, it, it, time out. This was a real back and forth for me. And, and people can understand this. This Darn was here, here, here's the situation. One of my main redraft leagues. Uh, it's where I it's where Yacht Club originated from. It's pretty much the exact same group. I am the leader in points by a pretty significant margin. But for whatever reason, I'm six and seven. Like we literally used FFHub.com to find out like what my record would be, what everyone's record would be if they had other people's schedules. Great tool, advise you to check it out. I only have a losing record with my schedule and someone else's. Like I'm in playoffs with anyone else's record. And I'm like, this is such bull crap. Like it's gonna come down to something stupid. And the back and forth was, and, and you, you agreed with my, my process at the end. I knew in my head, Elijah Moore is the tactically smart decision. Joe Flacco is starting. Um, you know, uh, Amari Cooper could be out. Elijah Moore could see a lot of targets. The problem was when you have a player you love, do you want to lose with them going off on your bench? And if George Pickens had caught a touchdown tonight, if he had had the performance Ezekiel Elliott had, if he had had, the, yeah. well, obviously he won't do it on the ground, but if he had scored 23 and a half points. Or if he had the performance that Deontay Johnson had, he, okay. Deontay Johnson is the one in he's that not. offense. He's you, not, you know yeah. what? You know, we're we're going to end the conversation there because there's so much more to talk about. But there is. we need to redo that intro and get better help. Code Walsh. Code we'll, do, Walsh. we'll go Code Walsh. If you are, if you need Time help out. getting over an X or if you need help getting over a wide receiver that you are just for if some you two odd are reason in an just in love relationship, with, and it's yeah. an unhealthy parasitic relationship, you just you need you need better help to get out of that. So use, use Code, code Walsh. Walsh. What's what? Use Code Walsh um 14 that's right i want to make sure i didn't want to guess but walsh 14 for pickens for pickens is number okay yeah, that's, yeah, no, that's yeah. great mm -hmm. listen let's get into it just just a little bit um yeah my love for pickens aside Freaking pickens man i can't I believe that i would say this about deontay his yeah. obviously he had the one touchdown on an outside target the rest of his yardage came at the end of the game in he's in the pretty one much garbage time. he's not he's the one anyway it was for the patriots a revelation with Bailey Zappi. This is a team that has struggled to win games and struggled to put up any points on offense. Bailey Zappi goes out there, 240 yards, three touchdowns, tiny bit of rushing smattered in, but he looked mobile. And then on the supporting cast, it's like 2017, 2018 was back in action or whenever Juju was drafted. <laughs> Juju's is relevant years. Yeah, because Juju <laughs> was relevant. And then Ezekiel Elliott looked like vintage Ezekiel Elliott, 68 
on the ground, seven for 72 through the air and a touchdown. Of course, by the way, I was, I was playing him in that league. I needed Pickens to do something. So <laughs> it's off to a hot start in my play in to get into playoffs. Um, what, what was working for Zappy? I mean, why, why, for whatever reason, can Zappy make this offense go in this particular game? And Mac Jones is just completely kaput. That, I honestly have no idea. We've seen Zappy come in and do this multiple times, right? He came in and did it a couple times last year. Last week, he completely dudded. And they they mentioned it during the broadcast how they didn't score a single point all last week. Yep. And then this week, Shut they come out. out. Yeah. And it's against a much better defense. This, the Chargers defense isn't terrible. But, I mean, the Steelers defense, that's what they're known they're for. They're known. They're yeah, known they, for they're their defense. Games. They're 7-5 and five going – or forgive me. Yeah, were they 7-5 going With, in this game? And now they're 7-6. Uh, yeah. Yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. So, Nuts, I, I, don't, I don't really know. I can't explain the zappy. But I'm going to say this. I'm not – in on the zappy experience i, I like really? Bailey zappy i think he's a i think he's an all right quarterback but i just i'm not bought into the fact that he's going to be i don't know what new england's going to do they're in position to draft a quarterback and they're not going to pass up on a drake may because they have bailey zappy no uh, i agree I, with that they also I, wouldn't I pass up on a michael Penix jr or a Jaden daniels like all of those guys you're not just you're going to roll the dice so the bailey zappy experience is literally for the next however many games in the season i can't i don't i can't remember what week we're in but that's and week then 14. from there, thank you. Week fourteen, and Damn. we're going to be done with Bailey Zappi, unfortunately. Yeah, and no, Mac I Jones mean, for that matter. Well, I mean, that's I think the bigger story is that it's clear Mac Jones. I don't think has a clear path to start anytime soon for anyone. I don't mm-hmm. think his draft capital. I know it was a first round pick, but it wasn't like he was a top three guy. You just you hate to see it for the guy. Like if he's in San Francisco, like know, they it's, draft him, is he is he MVP status? Brock Purdy. A right lot now? of people, a lot of people have said something similar to that. I think he would certainly be better in a Kyle Shanahan led offense, but no, I, I don't. I, I just don't. I've, I've I never. Do. do you remember Mac Jones' rookie year? He was, yeah, it was he good was rookie. actually very good. He was the yeah, best was quarterback in that class. That yeah, year. that year. I, I mean, that doesn't just go away. I think it does. I, I think I think people get tape on you like anywhere else, and um, I. I don't know what to make of the future of Mac Jones. Obviously, you probably don't, you can't sell him now in Dynasty by any stretch um, for anything worth anything. Um, this yeah. was kind of a prove it year, and he's proven that it's not it with the Patriots. I don't see a landing spot. He can go be a great backup. He can add to a room. He's he's easy to root against for me. He's just one of those guys that rubs me the wrong way. Um, so what ruined him was coaching last year and his offensive coordinator being a guy that's never called offensive plays in his life. So that's that's no. Part that, of the I issue. mean that is fair, but but he has Bill O'Brien this year, and Bill O'Brien historically has been a very good offensive mind. But, yeah, that's fair. Um, really quickly, wanted to touch on it. Ezekiel Elliott, like I said, had a great game. Oh. We were talking a little bit pre-show. How frustrating is it just as a Cowboys fan to see him be exactly what? we would need him to be for the Cowboys because Tony Pollard has had such a bad season, bro. He's exactly what the running game is missing in Dallas. Yeah. Like exact, like it just, it is, it's such a bummer to see as yeah. a Cowboys fan. And you just wonder like if Jerry Jones would have actually worked with him, would he have taken a team friendly deal? I think yeah. so. Yeah. Uh, but no, I mean, good for Zeke. It literally was a flashback game for Zeke and he looked good. He definitely yeah. looked older. He looked older. He didn't look as spry, but I mean, when he was, when he ran the ball, he ran downhill got the yardage and he looked good. So, I mean, good for him. He's getting the opportunity and Ramondre was good in that offense. That offensive line is doing their job in the run game. So yeah. And yeah. surprisingly, because they have no, absolutely no passing game other than tonight. I get zappy. Well, no, but it's it's bit. been inconsistent. It's not, I mean, Correct. Juju Smith-Schuster has best game of the year against the Steelers. You, you know, it's Juju. been Devonte, but right. It's yeah. been Devonte Parker, you know, before he got injured, Kendrick Bourne was the one there. You know, mm-hmm. I, I was a Tyquan Thornton owner last year. I was hopeful for him. He's no, he's nowhere to be seen. Hunter Henry is the one finding the end zone. It's just strange. I want to simply bring this up from a broader perspective. Does Bailey Zappi's performance and Ezekiel Elliott's performance kind of re-solidified the idea of zero running back really being the, the best way to move? Like I have Kenneth Walker and Jonathan Taylor in that same league I'm talking about. If I had just waited and grabbed Ezekiel Elliott off of waivers three weeks later, I would be doing so much better in week 14. If I'd filled my roster with those guys and kept wide receivers alternatively and and Mike and I've been talking about this more he's in a a certain dynasty league he plays in he's really gone for this like okay I only have one main and it's a four-point touchdown league I have one main QB and I've made that Sam Howell he's sold off Trevor Lawrence he sold off he just bought a rich from me in that league he did just buy a rich from you but um the idea being you can stream the quarterback position even in dynasty if you grabbed a number of I don't even want to call them backups but like 
and you know cheaper quarterbacks that you wouldn't normally find value in and and high end backups like a Gardner Minshew who always has a chance to start yeah I mean for the running back question I, I think unfortunately unless you get your hands on really Christian McCaffrey and and this for redraft Saquon Barkley still yeah I don't even know man Saquon Saquon's sure, Saquon, you're just banking on the value, situation. but like, yeah. yes, well, he's in a horrible situation, but there's no guarantee that we don't know where he's going to be next year. I don't, he, I doubt. No, that I, I, giant, was si- I was simply saying but, there were running backs. You could still have. Yeah. Well, I'm saying like in the first round in the first yeah. round of a startup or a first round of a, let's just say redraft oh, league. I, I I'm would going take Christian McCaffrey. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And I would probably uh, Bijan. Maybe I still would go Bijan. I, I think so. I think he's hanging on by a thread, but Miss me with Jonathan Taylor. Miss me with Kenneth Walker. Miss me with even Jameer Gibbs. Miss me with all of those guys. In a first round uh, next Austin year. Austin yeah. Eckler. Miss me yeah. with Austin Eckler. Like the only person I'm really willing to ride it out and say, like, if I whiff on him, I'm willing to whiff on him because he's basically a quarterback in my running back position. And that's Christian McCaffrey. And that's, yeah. that's pretty much the only guy. Well, Other than that, in, zero RB. Not even zero RB. It's priority RB. It's Let's call he, it that. It's hero RB. I would call it hero RB. It's just. You have to get one yeah. guy you believe in and then be willing to take flyers on, you know, any running back that has a legitimate opportunity to start. I mean, uh, well, here RB just seems to kind of like, Ooh, hero. I think priority RB meaning like do your, do your due diligence. And when you're going to draft a um, running back position and actually pay attention to the situation, right? Like know what you're getting into. Like well, Ramondre... what's trying to do, you know? Uh, well, yeah, you would think, but not that's really. Why, like that's it... why this show exists. It's the idea of like, wait, what is really going on? Sometimes the tea leaves are completely, like, you can do all the research in the world. Everyone and their mother thought tonight would be a punt fest, myself included, right? Like <laughs> we all knew it was going to be a punt no, fest. And no then... one, we, if we would have recorded before the uh, the game, we weren't going to say, are start, you kidding me? start Ezekiel Elliott. No, absolutely <laughs> not. That, but that's Bailey's happy. Like, are you kidding fair. me? Yeah, no, it, Sometimes the research is just wrong. It's it's kind of famous. It's it's part of what's making the college football debate so rampant. It's like, well, that's why you play the games, right? Like you can't just pick what's going to happen before it happens. It's really difficult. But when it comes to running backs, um, my the point I'm simply trying to make or or allude to is Ezekiel Elliott was dead for dynasty value. It was like, okay, is this guy even worth rostering? I would much rather have like Ezekiel Elliott versus Tank Bigsby next year. Tank Bigsby was really sexy this year because he was a potential breakout rookie with a goal line role. If you had taken Ezekiel Elliott, you'd be stoked right now in terms of production. Is, is Tank Bigsby ever going to be worth anything close to what Zeke Elliott is worth right this moment? You know what I mean? Is he ever going to be? I mean, that's... Well, I mean, Dearness Johnson, Dearness Johnson's getting, to, uh, you know, carries over him in, in Jacksonville right now. So yeah. it's tonight is just a sobering reminder I mean, Ty Montgomery is still getting plays. I don't know how yeah, Ty Montgomery how is, is even Montgomery relevant. Still, Lord, <laughs> Lord my, we need to move on from this segment. We're talking about Ty Montgomery. We're <laughs> we're upset. Uh, uh, and just going to the Trubisky side, even though he was bad and he looked bad for the game and made weird boneheaded decisions. Had a good fantasy still, day, yeah. Still had a decent fantasy day. Still had a, a passing touchdown and a rushing touchdown. So um, nothing else really to cover there. It was kind of a disappointing game, and I'm really sorry to Steelers fans. Uh, the Matt Canada handprints, whatever the problem is with your offense, it is – horrible to watch and it uh, brings me pain every single Sunday so we're going to take a break and when we come back in the spirit of Christmas Dylan and I have a naughty and a nice list to send to Santa Claus for some great fantasy players this year stay tuned Dylan we chatted on the phone further uh, today we were talking about a, a number of things to prep for the show but part of what I'm so excited about being a new parent I have a son who's eight months old this is our first Christmas and my wife is already having the like, are we going to do Santa Claus? Now, for a lot of people, that may sound crazy, but my wife is like incredibly principled. She's like, I don't want to create a dynamic where we're lying to our kids. And so I started doing, like I do, this crazy rabbit hole research. Like, who was the actual St. Nicholas? Like, where does St. Nick, like, where do we get Santa Claus from? This naughty, nice list, the reindeer, the whole nine, where does it come from? OG, original St. Nicholas, Absolute legend, absolute madman, huge fan, massive fan, tons of crazy stories, lived this crazy life. The story. Know how much of your? How much? Hold on. How much of your free time do you spend just researching random? You know, most of my free time, if I have a free moment, I'm researching Saint Nick and Clash of Clans and whatever else it is. You you keep referencing Clash of Clans. I have I don't play Clash of Clans anymore. You literally have college. Anymore, you, you said no, something you, the other day about no, 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 no. This yes, is you your said, go-to when the, cla- when the Clash of Clans come together and the way no. they're. Fl- we were saying something about what the are ancient, you talking about? That is know. your go-to diss 
when you think I'm being dirty. You just go clash of clans. I'm like, Dylan, I we're not talking no one's talking about Last clash week of clans. you were talking about mountains and Everest and I don't I don't even I don't even know at this point what direction you, you're going. And yeah, I, I, anyways, go go no, ahead. Yeah, go ahead, go ahead with Saint no, Nicholas. All, all I was gonna say is that Saint Nick the is G. like the yeah the original Saint Nicholas was all about not dropping presents down the chimney. Homie was dropping straight gold. It was a straight gift. So if you're on the nice list, it's because you have value. It's because you have real value. Lump of coal versus a toy, eh, whatever. I could maybe use the coal. You can compress that coal, make a diamond. Straight gold versus coal, it's a pretty sweet situation. But um, St. Nick aside, the naughty, the nice list, we all know it. It's December. And whether or not I'm going to have my son write letters to Santa Claus or just honor the actual memory of St. Nick uh, is, is to be determined. But right now, something that is also to be determined, the quarterback on my naughty list, Trevor Lawrence, is he actually going to be a fantasy superstar? Because at this point, I don't think we really know. He finished the season last year really hot. After, I think it was, uh, this is just his how he finished the season last year. This is, I believe, week 10. Quarterback 5, quarterback 16, quarterback 1, quarterback 5, quarterback 10. Then he was quarterback uh, 31 because it was that Travis Etienne game where Travis Etienne just went crazy. I don't know if you remember that. And then mm-hmm. Trevor Lawrence didn't have to – they won by like 40. They didn't have to do anything. Yep. Uh, and then it was quarterback 23. But he finished the season so hot, you were like, okay, here we go. On top of that, in the offseason, they add Calvin Ridley. In the offseason on keep trade cut, Trevor Lawrence skyrockets all the way to quarterback six in value. I'm not trying to kick a guy while he's down, especially when they don't have a cart to drive him to the locker room. But Trevor Lawrence, I think, is a very good, capable game manager NFL QB. But there's, I don't know if you've ever seen the meme where it's like the NFL is just a bunch of Kirk Cousins. And it's like uh, boring Kirk Cousin, fast Kirk Cousin, all these different things. I think Trevor Lawrence at his best, and Kirk Cousins is a dude. I mean, he's a fantasy superstar at times, but you never view Kirk Cousins as like this super high upside option. I think Trevor Lawrence is just Goldilocks Kirk Cousins. Man's got a great set of hair, but you're hoping that he hits 4,000 yards. And most of the time, he's not giving you 30 touchdowns combined on the ground and through the air. So he's been naughty. He's not yeah, helped your fantasy I, team. And in Dynasty, here's, here's really where he's naughty. You're pot committed to him because if you if you you, you either used the 101 in a rookie pick, mm-hmm. he was a high pick in your startup draft. You can't move off of him because he's got a long career ahead of him, but you can't really leverage up with him either. He's not a name that's going to fetch you a great market price right now. So uh, he's quarterback eight on K- KTC right now. Forgive me, quarterback nine on KT, uh, KTC right now. Quarterback 14 on the year, and in points per game, he's only quarterback 17. So Trevor Lawrence been a naughty, naughty boy. He deserves coldest. Naughty, naughty boy. I, listen, he, he's he been playing pretty well the last few weeks. I'm not going to lie. He got injured last game. He's played pretty well. And he does this because he did the same thing last season where he kind of turns it on towards the end of the season. I'm not really sure what the catalyst to that to that production is. But I wouldn't say, yes, he has been naughty this year, especially if you went and drafted him and redraft and you were hoping for him to be your QB1. You're not You're not very happy based off of what he's given you other than the last couple of weeks. So I understand the naughtiness of, or the naughty is naughtiness the right word. Here we go. Yeah. Don't, don't make it weird. Don't make, you know, <laughs> naughty <innocence, laughs> children, Santa Claus, naughty, nice. Like that, just, that was kinky, huh? Um, <laughs> see, this is, what, this is what you do this is, to the pure. All things are pure, Dylan. You're over here. Just taking us straight to hell. Well, right. T laws naughtiness has landed him you. on your list. Um, yeah. But no, I actually, I, I wouldn't say I wouldn't go as far as to say like I would be selling T Law because like you said at this point no, I don't you, know what, you can't. what the value is. You're you're yes, you're you're pot invested on him, but like are you what what are you saying with him being naughty? Are you saying you you don't want him I'm at saying, all? One of the worst and things. And as soon as his value about, spikes, you're gonna sell no, him. I'm simply saying he's on the naughty list because he's put you in the, the most difficult position to be in in Dynasty, right in the middle. You know what I mean? Yeah. This is a guy that's not easy for you to move. He's a key piece to what you're – you're just going to have to wait for him to start performing, right? Because you know that young quarterbacks who are athletic that have his profile that can do what he what you've seen and flashes him to do, you, you're not trading Trevor Lawrence for Dak Prescott plus. First of all, the Dak Prescott owner oh, right no. now – Not competing. even – no chance. Yeah, right? No. So – I mean, if you're playing – I mean, Dynasty, right? We're, we're, we're talking Dynasty value here. 
yeah. dynasty in a two to three year window. I want Dak Prescott over him. The, yeah. The line that I draw for T Law is I don't know at this point if I want Kyler Murray or T Law. I really don't no, know. That, and it's it but, that's kind of where it's at. The the right QB and, 11, 12. And the fact that he's still in the top ten of quarterbacks is like he's overvalued and the production's never gonna, that's gonna fair, be yeah. there. So I mean, and here's the other thing. Not to it's not his fault he got injured per se, but you you talked about it. He was getting hot again. His best finish before week uh well, he, up to week 10 was quarterback eight. And that was in week one sent, you know, he'd been quarterback 10 one time since then. And then against San Francisco, he was quarterback 31. And then the last three weeks, including his injury game, quarterback one, quarterback six and quarterback five, you That's were, a, you were like, yes. So g- going with your less, you know, your PG 13 theme, it's kind of a tease. You thought you were going to get this week, yeah. you know, this season winning performance. So that's why Trevor Lawrence has been naughty. I don't think you need to sell him. I'm simply saying, be prepared to, for a lot of frustration with Trevor Lawrence. I don't think he's he's not in that elite tier. I mean, I wouldn't take him over Justin Herbert, certainly. Um, no. You know, he's just in, you no. know, him and no. Lamar Jackson are kind of a similar situation. Um, but Lamar's played better and been more available. Yeah, so, yeah I want Lamar um, over him for sure. But, yeah, and he's had a better You season. know, so he's getting cold for Christmas from you. Yes. St. Josh. From St. Dylan, you. you know who's getting gold? I'm going to go over to his house and hand deliver gold down his chimney. That sounded gold. so bad. I hope that is not interpreted poorly. Dude, you are, uh, you, you are, <laughs> you are absolutely swinging in business. We're rolling. This is supposed and to I'm be a family keep, friendly I'm, show. I'm yeah, going to keep, keep going. this rolling. Yep. Samuel Howe, the QB4 on this year. And wow. if I'm not mistaken, at the beginning of the season, we talked about You traded how him away. Oh, wait, I no, did that was a different, no, different that, part of the beginning why, of the season. Why, why you got, can I, we, we need to talk to my, I need a mute button on here so that Sorry. whenever I go to talk and you try to say something, I can just mute you because you, you always Deontay rehash Johnson. in the past. You, you always rehash in the, the Deontay past. Deontay Johnson is the one overpicking. Deontay Johnson, Johnson happened tonight. Um, sure. Sam Howe, QB4 on the year. At the beginning of the season, talked about how I would be going to get Sam Howe because I, I, I would, yes, build my dynasty team around Sam Howe. And yep. the Washington Commanders have done nothing but prove that they're going to do the exact same thing. They don't go and get rid of this. Okay, I guess you can never say for definitively what someone's going to do. But I, it's hard for me to think that they're going to get rid of those defensive players that they got rid of, Chase Young um, yep. and uh, – Montez Sweat. Montez Sweat, thank you. Um, and get rid of Sweat and then say, you know what, go win us football games without your best defensive players. And by the way, you're going to have to carry the offense with – Terry McLaurin going 0 for 3 and Curtis Samuel being your wide receiver one when you have a first round draft pick wide receiver in Jahan. I, I don't understand the offense, but regardless, would you want Terry McLaurin on your team right now if you're going in the playoffs? Not at all. Like if you have to rely on Terry McLaurin? No, you can't. You can't. What about he Jahan Dotson? Can't do it. No what shot. about I, Curtis Samuel? I'm curious. Yeah, I mean, maybe actually. Curtis Samuel maybe. had a good season, but maybe. Curtis Samuel has had a decent season, right? Yeah. Would you want Brian Robinson, a healthy Brian Robinson? Oh yeah, no question. I'd want a healthy Brian Robinson. How does it make sense that Sam Howe is a QB four and you want none of his options? It's because he Robinson. runs the ball. Sam Howe That's runs the ball. He does whatever he can to get this team a win, and he's literally listen to this. The last five weeks, the last five weeks, he has been a QB ten or higher. QB 10 or higher. These are his That's finishes. Old. Starting in week eight, QB 1, QB 10, QB 4, QB 10, QB 10, QB 9. I don't even know if they've won those games, but he literally is doing they all lost. he can. They've, they've lost pretty yeah. much all of those games, right? And I just think Sam Howe is slinging the ball, and he doesn't even – I don't know what's going on. Terry McLaurin has been a dud. Jahan Dotson has been a dud. Curtis Samuel sure has been fine, but he's getting it done and he's running the ball. He's doing what you want from a fantasy quarterback. And so at QB four, this dude is getting all the gold in the world. If I had a gold plate right now, I would first class it to Sam Howe and drop it down his chimney. There you I, go. Do you, do you agree with me? Do you disagree with me? How, no, how I love feel it. about Sam Howe? I, I, here? The, the only, the, I think he deserves to be on the nice list, especially because when you consider the, um, Oh, hold on. Sorry. I didn't even say this at the beginning of the season. What do you think Sam Howell was ranked? QB what? Oh, keep trade cut or? Yeah, yeah, let's use keep trade cut. Keep trade cut. Uh, quarterback 18, quarterback 21 at best. Quarterback 29. This, this is know. back in, so this is I'll um, give you one final preseason. Guess. Quarterback 22. Okay. Quarterback 29. Crap, what do you think wait, he is on 22. KTC now? He's probably quarterback 14, 15. Quarterback 16. So close. 
This dude went from quarterback 29. You could have bought him at 29 prices and even still at quarterback 16. I'm, yeah. I'm buying Sam Howell. Go if you if you're not past your trade deadline or first thing in the offseason, if you are, go and try to get Sam Howell. Because he's going to be a starter somewhere. There's no way that he does what no. he does this year. And even right. if Washington is dumb enough to take a quarterback, then he's going to have a job somewhere else. This dude can start know. over Kenny Pickett. He could start over so many guys yes. in this league. Yeah, no, I, I completely agree with you. And I'm so glad that you brought that up because the acquisition cost for Sam Howell is what puts him on the nice list. Mm-hmm. Like, he, it's quarterback four, and this guy was completely off everyone's radar. And what's great about Dynasty is you can stash a Sam Howell on a bench Hope he works out. And then by week three, he's an every week starter. Um, I, but I did think, you know, when you brought up Terry McLaurin and Johan Dotson, I'm like, he's not on, they're, they're not on his nice, like <laughs> he's not on their nice list. Like they're mad oh, no. at him, but Yo, yeah, he, he, he throws to the open guy. Um, he's, he's a gamer, man. He, you know, it's funny, he, he reminds me a lot of, of Tony Romo. Like when Tony Romo broke out, like, and he even yeah. said he grew up a Cowboys fan and he modeled a little bit of his game. The guy's just a gunslinger. He throws to who's open he makes plays when it matters. Um, he's a dog. He is a he's, dog. He's been a, a pleasant surprise in the dynasty community this year, especially with all the other disappointments at quarterback. Uh, someone else who should be on the naughty list is is Justin Fields, but we didn't. I didn't want to bring it up. This so um, funny story. We were literally talking about this, and Josh specifically said, "He goes, I'm not giving you the quarterback naughty." I'm like, "Okay, I mean, I'm fine with that, but why?" He goes, "Because I know you're going to pick Justin Fields." Well, and also and people I didn't even second guess it. Of course I was going to pick Justin we, Fields. <laughs> like, why would I not? I was, like, I was like, Dylan, like, we've done that take 15 times. Like, it's fair. It's valid. But we don't have to go there. And Trevor Lawrence, worse than points. I would probably Justin have your, 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 um, all of your favorites would probably be on my naughty list. It would start with Justin Fields. Right no, under that would be George Pickens. Favorites. And then that would be. No, Jordan I would, would be right. He would be on the, yeah, he would be on exactly, the nice list. Exactly. Uh, let's move on to wide receiver, Dylan. We gave you what, the naughty wide receiver. I'm excited to hear because we kept these a secret from each other um, other than the obvious. Ooh, can I guess first? Sure. Do yeah, I try to ahead. guess each other? Okay. Go ahead and try. Uh, go ahead. The wide receiver who's been naughty for you. Oh, it's got to be Quentin Johnson. <laughs> I would not waste my breath or my analysis on Quentin Johnson. He's There's not, not enough analysis not I can do. No, no, he doesn't. He doesn't even make... get a stocking. He's, <laughs> no, he's been he kicked hasn't... out of the house. Yeah, <laughs> he hasn't he's quite not invited made it for there Christmas. Yet. Yeah, yeah, yeah no, enough, he he enough. is literally he's on. Yeah, I don't even know. He's in Whoville with the Grinch or something. I don't even know where he's at. No, my <laughs> my <laughs> naughty wide receiver is the wide receiver thirty nine, and that's going to be Tampa Bay Buccaneers Chris Godwin. Wow. Chris Godwin is I just the reason why he's on my naughty list. I have no idea what to do with him. I, I literally have no yeah. idea what to do with him. Like he's at that interesting age of 27. He's not a bad wide receiver. It just seems like Mike Evans is the one there and he's getting all the touchdowns. All the, I mean, Mike Evans, let me fact check he's this. Mike Evans year. is the wide receiver five on the year. Wide receiver five. Chris Godwin's wide receiver 39. This is just, I, yes, it's it's baffling. I, I don't understand it. And so the reason why he's on my naughty list is a lot, largely due to the fact that this offseason, there was a lot of hype and speculation because Baker Mayfield, I think a lot of people were drawing conclusions from how he treated Odell Beckham and Jarvis Landry. I would say mm-hmm. Mike Evans is more the Odell Beckham type. Not, I'm not saying they had the same play style, but in that offense would have played the same role as a deep threat, whatever. Right. And then Jarvis Landry was the possession guy underneath, right? Chris Godwin is not he's, – he's, he literally had – one touchdown this past game, and that was his only touch. I'm pretty sure he had targets, but he only had one yeah. carry for a touchdown. So, I, I mean, he started off the season at wide receiver on KTC, wide receiver 29, which, you know, is okay. Still some value I still there, think that's yeah. lower. I think that's lower than he should have been based right. off of the hype he had coming in. He's now wide receiver 40 as, at 27 years old. It. Yeah. So he's on my naughty list, but he might be by low. I don't know who's going to be playing quarterback there, but he's just 27 years old. So I just, I don't, don't know what to Baker do. You think Baker gets re-upped? You know what? They might be in a position where they have to because they, they're yeah. not going to have a draft pick. Well, it is a deep quarterback class. Baker's not playing bad. So there's a strong chance that he could. Yeah, I, I don't yeah, see why they wouldn't write it out. It's limbo for sure. I mean, and, and Chris Godwin's future either way is he hasn't played good with Baker. And then if a new guy comes in at 27, so... It's it's a it's a risk worth taking depending on the cost, um, but I, I like it. I like it. You're grinning. What are you Dude, grinning I, about? No, it's 
I the can wide see the receiver green. on no no the wide receiver on my nice list is Mike Evans. <laughs> I was like, dang it, Dylan! Like, no way. That's straight up, hilarious. Straight up. That is you so already mentioned funny. it. He's wide receiver five on the season. I one of the best stats I could pull is in Yacht Club before the season started. The Mike Evans owner, and I'm gonna I'm gonna be complicit in this. It was one of my go to trade partners. He traded Tyler Lockett and a second to get Mike Evans, which at the time, and I was like. I called him. I was like, bro, awesome job. Tyler Lockett, Mike Evans, probably going to have super similar seasons. You know, I was thinking yeah. like a couple boom games, you know, maybe 800 yards. I thought this was the first year. We, we got to remember coming into the preseason, there was questions about Mike Evans' hamstring. We, you know, on the Charles yeah. Robinson episode, we asked him about that. All signs pointed to the end of an era for Mike Evans. Wide receiver five on the season. And, and he is on the eternal nice list because – Dylan, this is his career finishes in half PPR scoring going all the way back to his rookie year. 12, 23, 1 overall, 19, 9, 12, 10, 8, 16 last year. And that's what you thought. You thought 16 last year. Okay, it's starting to slide. It's going to, you know, Mm -hmm. he'll be a wide receiver two, maybe, you know, probably wide receiver three, but two upside. To be the wide receiver five at 30 years old, to eclipse a thousand yards again in his career, 10 touchdowns already on the season, going to finish as a, as a wide receiver one. He's already got the points to do it. It's just a cherry on top at this point. And here's, here's what's great about bringing up a Mike Evans too. So often we think in dynasty sell when a player's out of their prime and there's just certain players you have to trust are outliers, you know, in the younger generation guys who have yet to enter their full prime. Now the only people who I think can do what Mike Evans has done or on track to do it is Justin Jefferson, Jamar Chase, and, and Tyree Kill, who's not that far behind Evans in age. It's just sometimes in Dynasty, we overthink it. We overvalue youth. I've certainly been guilty of it. Great example you brought up. There was a trade I did in the league, Dylan. You criticized heavily. I traded DJ Moore and Saquon Barkley away for George oh. Pickens and a, and a first. <laughs> you, well, you know, say it with your chest. George Pickens and a first. <laughs> You're very upset by that. Uh, um, firsts were hard great. to come by. I didn't have my own first, and this has a chance to be a, a lottery first. So it had some value. But I might be overvaluing the youth of George Pickens and the potential upside. He may yeah. never be as good as DJ Moore is right now. And I, so it's just a classic I, lesson of, yeah, of what just I love, trusting guys who've been there and done that. What I love about Mike Evans is he just shows us last year all signs based off of whatever metric or whatever analysis you have as a fantasy analyst. like. He just shows us we know absolutely nothing. Absolutely nothing. I mean, think about it. He had one of his one of his down years, right? And at age twenty nine, we're like, oh, dude, he had Tom Brady, and he was finished as he'd ever had wide receiver sixteen. I mean, wide receiver sixteen is still good, but we're like, yeah, but it was Tom Brady. But but remember, it it was Tom Brady, and they led the league in pass attempts by a huge amount. They were throwing the ball like every other, like every play, actually. Yeah, and and in comes Baker Mayfield, and everyone's like, okay. I mean, Mike Evans is 30 years old, over the hill, Baker Mayfield. Uh, I don't know. And now he's having a, a wide receiver five season. Like, that, it's just, it just, guys, if at least listen to us for entertainment and any podcast you listen to, listen to for entertainment. Because oh, we're, we is, are entertaining it, first. It That's is the so, goal. We're in the cockpit with you. We don't pretend that we can see the future. No one can. No one, no can. one can. And can. And if anyone told you that wide, or Mike Evans was going to be a top five wide receiver, they – if anyone says that they knew that was coming, they're lying to you. Do not believe them. Yeah. They're, they're, they're absolutely not telling the truth. So, yeah, anyways, I just thought I would point that out because it just shows how much we don't – how little we know about this game. It's just mm-hmm. Mike, Mike Evans. If you would have had Mike Evans and Keenan Allen as your wide receivers, and you'd be set. And no one was telling you to have those guys. It was Jamar Chase and no, Justin I mean, Jefferson. Dude, you'd be bummed. It's, it's funny. I jumped into a trade calculator today. like the the Or not trade calculator, a um, like a draft – with a draft wizard by fantasy pros. And mm-hmm. it's, it's something you, everyone does in August. Like you do a mock draft to see in redrafts. And I was just curious, like, okay, if I were to draft the best team that would have happened for the season, what would the grade be? So obviously you take like Christian McCaffrey around the one Oh two, but Mike Evans is like a seventh round pick, you know, Keenan Allen, DJ Moore, Brandon, Ayuk, Debo Samuel, all those guys are third or fourth round picks, Sam Laporta, Puka Nakua undrafted. I, I did the draft and Mike Evans was one of my wide receivers. I got an F. I 100% got an F. Like, it was, I had like Dak Prescott, I had Puka, I had Raheem Mostert, Brian Robinson, uh, Christian McCaffrey was like, but, and it was like, 
every analyst going into the year, because that's what this this uh, mock draft thing uses, use composite analyst rankings. It was like, this team has zero wide receiver depth. Like, no, it has the wide receiver five <laughs> in Mike Evans at 30 years that's old. That's true. So, one, one other thing I want to hit on that you mentioned was the overvaluing of youth. I think mm-hmm. in Dynasty, there needs to be a real conversation, and I hope that people start to come to this realization of, Youth is great. Don't get me wrong. You want young studs, Jamar Chases, mm-hmm. Justin Jeffersons. I'm not saying that you should go sell them for Mike Evans Plus. I would not advise no. that. <laughs> I would not advise no. that. But what I will say is if you want to win, if your goal is to win, you have to throw age out the window. You have to look at production and you have to actually evaluate. Like Tyreek Hill, Tyree Hill is getting to that age. I think he's 29 right now. I think he's 29. Yeah, 29 right now. Stephon Diggs. Yeah. I mean, Devonte Adams is thirty-one, so I, I, mean, I just think he, it's, him it's a fear it might of, be a little be worried, right? About. But it's 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 the fear of getting like none of us want the you know the egg in our face. We don't want to get stuck holding the hot potato when it's like oh it it collapsed on my team, and so we're always like I'd rather yeah. be early than late. And there's a there's a huge element of truth to that, but like That's you can myth. miss no, out. I, I'm sorry, and I'm I'm guilty of that. I. A lot yeah. of what I did with over tinkering in Yacht Club was because of I didn't want to get caught holding the back. But it's like mm. you've got to have a conviction on like if you – even if they're older. If you had – imagine if your wide receiver room this year was Tyree Kill, Mike Evans, and Keenan Allen. You are like chilling. And your running back room was yeah. like – I mean what? Raheem Mostert and – Brian Robinson. Brian Robinson. Yeah. yeah, Raheem Mostert and Brian Like, you're chilling. Yeah. Your quarterback's Dak Press. Like, that's a very realistic team that you can have. And oh, like, yeah. It's – you You would be – I mean, obviously, barring your schedule. like, you But you wouldn't know. have it because you, you would have looked at your team. You'd have, you'd have analyzed it been like, I need to inject you. Like, I need to get younger. And you, get you younger. trade away a Mike Evans for, like, heck, a Khalil Shakir even. No, I'm not saying that. No, that no, for sure. no. Well, Sky no. Moore. Sky Moore was going for multiple seconds. Sky Moore like, was hot. Yeah, Sky Moore was hot. In the offseason. Sky Moore is worth nothing now. Like Sky yeah. Moore is a complete dud, and you passed up on the wide receiver five because he was younger. So yeah, it's, yeah. It, it happens. No, that's, a, that's a real thing. So like, it, yeah, yeah, if anything, it's just learning that you like don't – age is – age ain't nothing but a number. As, as pretty Ricky would say, there's some truth. Number. No, there's some truth. You do, you do got to be careful. You do want to examine. Josh doesn't okay. even know who pretty Ricky is. You know who pretty Ricky is? Pretty Ricky, pretty boy, doing pretty good. Thank no, no, no. Oh, my land. Oh, we're gonna have to give you a lesson, maybe one day. Uh, (laughs) someone who needs a lesson in well, maybe his coach needs a lesson in utilizing top tier talent. Moving on to the tight ends and getting right to the naughty list. This is listen, I don't know if this is pandering to the people, but the entire fantasy community is aware that Kyle Pitts deserves to be on the naughty list. And here's what I want to say obviously. He's he's, he's had a no, he's yeah listening. yeah he's had a horrible year he's had a horrendous year he's the tight end fifteen on the year um, but if he had just shown one or two flashes like one crazy game where he does something incredible and makes a highlight reel his dynasty value would maintain his dynasty value would recoup because it's like oh it's all Arthur Smith he's a victim of circumstance I can wait it out he's still young he's twenty two twenty three years old. Um, his best game on the year, he was the tight end three, which sounds great. It's like, okay, maybe that was flash, but it was only four for 43 and a touchdown. So it was just an off week for tight ends in general. He didn't do much of anything. Kyle Pitts was the most hyped tight end. I bought into it. I was like, oh, if I can get Kyle Pitts, I offered two firsts for Kyle Pitts in Yacht Club this last off season, got turned down. Kyle Pitts is not worth a first today. Full stop. No, no, no shot. No way I'm doing it. If you have Kyle Pitts, you may not just be getting a lump of coal for Christmas. You may have a lump of coal. And I'm not I'm not saying Kyle Pitts isn't talented. We saw it his rookie season. But the motivation, man, I don't I don't I can't judge what's going on because what I see on the field, frankly, I don't see him utilized that much. It's confusing. The targets are weird. The whole Atlanta offense is a bad situation. Kyle Pitts, it really stinks because you invested, you know, we talked about Sam Howell. He was such he's great because of the the acquisition costs you pay for Kyle Pitts. You paid a lot to get him, and there has been zero return. And now I think you're past the point, especially with all the tight ends we've talked about this season, all the young ones that have entered the Dalton Kincaids, the Sam Laportas, um, the resurgent one, or not the resurgent, but like guys emerging like Jake Ferguson. Like, frankly, I'd rather have Dalton Schultz in a dynasty league connected to CJ Stroud than I would Kyle Pitts right now. I'm not saying I would make that trade straight up. I would just, 
knowing that I had a team with Dalton Schultz tells me I have other assets. I didn't spend a ton of money to go sink into Kyle Pitts. Like maybe finally he'll, he'll be worth something in dynasty because someone's going to be able to buy low and eventually he'll turn into something. But yeah, as of right now, yeah. it's a complete swing and a miss. And I don't know when it gets better. I, yeah. God, naughty. Is so frustrating. He, yeah. Like I said, he's on Arthur Smith's naughty list. I don't know what he did, but yeah, to me, I think I'm kind of, I'm on the same boat. He's definitely on my naughty list and I don't want any, I don't want to touch him with the 10 foot pole. And here's why I think if anyone, any pass catcher in that offense is going to gain relevance, it's going to be Drake London. Drake London is going to be more relevant in the passing game before Kyle Pitts is. And I think that's just the reality. I think, I think Kyle Pitts will have his moments and have his games, but Again, it's the tight end position. Like, like you said, the week he was a tight end three. You said when he had four for yeah, four for forty three and a touchdown. It's like it. That's the tight Gross. end position. Like you, you want the outliers that like my guy that I'll talk about in a second. That's going to be on the on the nice list. Like you want guys that show a little more upside. Um, yeah. And when they're producing and they have big games, it's like it's it's eight receptions for ninety to a hundred well, yards. Like you want those types of games. It's all about the yardage for tight end, the upside tight ends, right? Because it's essentially touchdown roulette for most tight ends. Like that's the whole thing yeah. when you're streaming the position. It's like, oh, if they get a touchdown this week, I'm okay. Cause you're not eight for 90 much. to hundred, maybe too. Yeah. Optimistic. No, but even, even if it's like 70 yards, like we yeah, want wide something. receiver two production from our tight end one, like something yep. along those lines, right. That well we, said. that we can get from, from our tight end position. So I'm on board with, with Kyle Pitts, but moving on to Mr. My nice guy, nice guy is guy Dremel, on the nice please. list you keep making no, my nice guy stuff. he's, he's a nice guy. guy he's on the nice list it's christmas it's my list he's my nice guy okay 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 you can get off my back okay i'm getting he's on the nice list and this guy is getting gold for christmas as well and it is trey mcbride oh very small sample size right and i could have gone a few different directions i like jake ferguson but i felt like that was too much of a homer pick so you know what i like trey mcbride i think what we've seen from Trey McBride and Kyler Murray defaulting to him over what seems like over Hollywood Brown. Um, I, I like what we're seeing. Like he passes the eye test on the field. The guy started off the season well, last year. Let's kind of go back, right? Last year, he was kind of the dynasty darling in the off season taken in the second round by Arizona. Yep. Everyone's like, Oh, he's going to be the guy. Zach Ertz was the guy, mm -hmm. but we should know tight ends don't hit early. Very rarely. No. We're getting spoiled with Sam LaPorta. We're getting spoiled with Dalton Kincaid. Um, it, it's not very often that that tight end actually Musgrave hit to some extent. Yeah. Luke Musgrave to some extent. Yeah, you're right. Um, and Jake Ferguson, really. Well, I know Jake Ferguson's. A He's not a year. rookie. Yeah, yeah. But still, um, so Trey McBride was he was taken in the second round. Everyone thought he was going to be go get Trey McBride. I'm pretty sure he was taken in the back of the first or early second round in our yacht. Club yeah, he was the draft. yeah he was the two o two. Yeah, which is pretty high for a tight end. Um, yeah. Um, so that being said, going throughout the season, Zach, Zach, uh, Zach Ertz was the tight end one in Arizona this year. Zach Ertz gets hurt. Fast forward. Now at the beginning of the season, what do you think Zach Ertz, or sorry, Zach Ertz, uh, Trey McBride, Trey McBride was McBride's on keep Trey on KT, Yeah. KTC. He's Probably ranking. tight end 19. Oh, wow. Tight end 20. Nice. What do you think he's at That's now? Good. Tied, oh, I know. I know. It's either five or six. Last I checked, it was six. <laughs> he's tied in five now. He's tied in five. Yeah, he's, so so he's ahead is, of Kelsey. Yes. Oh, is he ahead of Kelsey? I didn't I didn't see that. He was below Kelsey when I last saw. I'm going to have to vet that. But I. that's insane. If he's above Kelsey, I mean, that he makes is. sense. That That's keep trade cut yeah. for you. I mean, Puka Nakua yeah. is probably over Justin Jefferson for all I know right now because Justin Jefferson hasn't played. I'm serious, bro. That's how KTC reacts. I'm, you Not think I'm kidding? Time. Oh, bro. No, there's a level of it. It overvalues picks in youth. We agree. We agree. But anyways, Justin Jefferson's still in the top tier of the top tier. <laughs> that was an exaggeration, like, but it was yes. more so to make my point that KTC overreacts. We we okay. overreact as dynasty players. Yeah. Um, I digress. Trey McBride to me, I mean, in his last few games is when we've kind of seen him coming coming to fruition. Mm -hmm. On the season, he's tied in 10, which we talked about it. It doesn't take much for tight end 10. I mean, the dude started off as tight end 29, 33, 58, 53, 35 to start off the season. And now yeah, he's tight so end 10. Yeah, he's he's setting the world ablaze right now. He's he setting the world ablaze, but I mean, he only has three, sorry, four finishes inside the top 10. Four finishes yeah. inside the top 10. And that's not hard to do. The top 10 is not hard to do for tight ends. And I know I'm kind of not making my case for him, but the reason why I'm an, a fan of him is because targets are earned. We talk about that all the yeah. time for receivers. You can't negate the same exact fact for tight ends. In the last four weeks, 
nine targets, seven targets, nine targets, nine targets. I give me that all day. We just, I just said, you want wide receiver two opportunity for your tight end one, and you are gold. If you happen to get a Sam Laporta or a Travis Kelsey or Mark Andrews situation, that's phenomenal. But if you can get this production out of your tight end one, put them on my nice list, please, because I can guarantee yeah. you this is only going to go up. We've seen Hollywood Brown fade into the background. You haven't really seen him be relevant at all. Well, he's, I'll get to it, but he's battling an injury with his. He is battling an injury, sure, but I mean, the I, he he's been battling injury since he got into the league, so that's kind of a concern. I'm not going to say he's injury yeah. prone, but no, he's prone true. to injury. Um, so that being said, he's on my nice list. <laughs> what are you laughing at me for? That was a good. I'm not going to say he's you. injury prone. He's just prone to injury. Complete difference, <laughs> Your Honor. It's completely different. Utilize. Right. I just flipped the words around. It's great. That's how it works. I'm bought into him. What do you think, Trey McBride? Give me some feedback. No, here. I, I, I think it's great, man. I think he's a, an ascending star. I want to ask you, is this fool's gold to some extent? We're talking four games. You're the mm-hmm. one who agrees keep, keep, trade cut is a little overhyped. Do you really want Trey McBride over a Cole Komet, over a uh, – I'm trying yes. to think of other guys. Jake Ferguson. Um, Probably not Jake let, Ferguson. Well, let me explain. In these last four games – Michael Wilson's been injured. Marquise Brown's been injured. Zach Ertz obviously no longer on the team because they trust Trey McBride. I think he's a good player. But is this is this a little bit of the case of like there's just no one else in town to throw to, and this is a, a run first team? Like yeah. I think Trey McBride is a little overvalued right now, and you're happy with him. He's young. I think he's going to continue to produce. But this is a team that is mostly connected to a Marvin Harrison, right? High end draft pick. They probably don't need the quarterback because they paid it. What happens when a, a dominant wide receiver, reliable one comes to town? What does his production look like then? Because we have yeah. no model. We, all we have is like, oh, he broke out four games. Like, yeah, but it was also a lot of, you know, there's a lot of players who've been unbelievably good in four games. Yep. My, my man, George Pickens being one of them. If I could make a case, you know what I mean? Like, it's good to see him flash. I think it's exciting. I think he deserves to be on the nice list for this year. But his long-term value, he, to me, he's a sell-high candidate. Oh, Anytime, no, no. I know, man. Give me, give we've me. We've seen this. Well. Al- we've seen this already. We've seen this. DeAndre Hopkins and Zach Ertz. Like we've seen this. DeAndre Hopkins was the one. Zach Ertz yep. still produced, and it was the same quarterback, Kyler it, Murray. Yeah, but Trey, time out. Trey McBride was there. He didn't do anything. Trey McBride was the backup tight end. That's why That's he wasn't. Saying, but we've never seen Trey McBride when he was slotted to be the starter with a dominant wide receiver one. That's healthy. We haven't. Or we did, and I, I like, didn't even make a case for his production. I didn't even say anything about his production. I made the case for his targets. If he's getting nine targets, give Those me that time. all day. The targets, the targets equal the production. I mean, you you make you make catches off target. What I'm saying is, I think he'll have less targets next year per game. I think this this stretch. Is so you're okay. That's that's what I'm yeah. saying. I, I think there's I, don't, a I, don't, I don't agree with that, but okay. I, th- you know, I, th- I think I think they're going to have to throw the ball. Five more. targets a game, maybe. He, he gets five targets a game normally. If, if Marvin Harrison Jr. is there, he gets five to six a game. No problem. Michael Wilson, when he comes back and is healthy, I think you're going to see Jeremy McBride uh, like dwindle in value a little bit. It, or not in value, in production. And I think the same thing is going to happen when they draft a high-end wide receiver. I, he's a great player. I think he's inflated right now um, because there's just a lot of injuries and Kyle's got not a lot of other places to go with the ball. But it's, it's a good one. And you shouldn't ignore what uh trey mcbride is doing dylan bring us into running backs and tells me tells me tell me tells who's me. being who's on the naughty list at the running back position oh i'll tell you i'll tell you who's on the naughty list tells and this guy is on the naughty list so bad. austin eckler austin eckler mm, that's fair this guy he's such a you, great guy he though. literally play he is he's a great guy great running back but he's destroying people's run at the playoffs right now He's absolutely mm-hmm. destroying it. If you have Austin Eckler, you were stoked earlier in the season, mid mid season, right? You were stoked. He's hitting his hot streak. And then the last few games, you're literally, you're panicking because he's most likely your RB1, right? Mm-hmm. He's most likely your RB1. And this team, I don't know what is going on from an offensive standpoint. It's Kellen Moore in my opinion, but there's something that has completely halted this offense. And Austin Eckler now being the wide receiver, or, uh, RB on keep trade cut. What do you think he is right now? Remember, we're very reactionary. 19? 22. 
22. His fall since I last checked it, yeah. To start of the season, he was at RB11. He was an RB1, and right, no one would yeah. have argued that. At the beginning well, of the he season, was no the one's... RB1 last year. At the end of the season, he was the RB1. I mean, for, yes. you know what I mean? Like, you were, you were not expecting this. You were not expecting this. You know where he's at in our Yacht Club scoring? Scoring? I don't even want to know. It's got to be like RB35. Like, it's terrible. RB28. Okay. That's not that bad. That's not I mean, well. no, it's that's terrible. pretty, bro. That's it's, your RB1. You panic. are so panicking. Like, I think, we're, I think he's done. I think he's done. I'm going to come out and say it. I think I think the run of Austin Eckler, be, and, and I said this at the beginning of the season. I remember having a conversation with Davis specifically. I said, there's no way that he's going to keep up this production. And you know what the Chargers yeah. have done? They wasted Keenan Allen's prime, and they wasted Austin Eckler's prime. Because Austin, yeah. it's done. he's done. He's not going to bounce back and be this RB1 to finish off the season. I just I don't see it happening. I mean, last week he played New England, so we'll give it to him. But he still has Denver. Denver is a very good defense. Their defense has turned it yeah. up a notch. So they're good defense. Yeah. Vegas, their defense is also better. Ever since AP took over, they've been better. Yeah. And that's a division game. And Buffalo. Uh, Buffalo and then Denver again, actually. So your playoff run, you've got to play Denver twice. Uh, or D- Denver and Vegas. I, I don't know. I just don't think he's going to turn it around. And this offense as a whole, they don't have a passing game. They literally can well, just load the box. And he's not getting those dump-off passes like he usually does. Yeah, the whole Chargers offense has been disappointing this season. I do have a question, though, like, we just talked about wide receivers and you were like, if you want to win, ignore age. And then we get to the running back position. That lesson goes out the window. It's like, no, he's it's 28. Not. It's well, dead. yes. Well, actually, yes. Actually, yes. And you know this and you would agree with this. Running back is completely, it's a completely different position. Like there is well, an age receiver, for running yeah. back. I mean, obviously there's yes, a complete, yes. and the only running back. And I said this, that I would be willing to like actually risk it for the biscuit. It may have been Austin Eckler at the beginning of the season for a lot of people, for me, no. But Christian McCaffrey still like until the wheels fall off for Christian McCaffrey, I'm I'm still going to take him. Uh, question: at his value. I'm not to bring it up again, but shouldn't Miles Sanders also be on the naughty list because oh you risked it for the biscuit? I, I away was going to put Miles Sanders on here, and then I was like, Miles no one Sanders. else cares yeah. about Miles Sanders, and That's I just fair. have a vendetta against Miles Sanders. The dude, you, I did my research on Miles Sanders. You know what he was on KTC to start the season? Uh, RB thirteen, RB fourteen. Something like that. No, he he didn't get that high. Maybe earlier in the off season, but I only looked okay. at like the beginning of the season. He was RB twenty. You know where he's at now? Yeah, fifty. Fifty five. He's RB fifty five. Oh. Like talk about just getting. Oh my gosh, that's just like... running backs. That's the thing. If you if you get caught holding a bat with a running back, it's just it's like, bad. All right, it's bad. It's disintegrated in value. It's, it's, it's and that's and I think if you have Austin Eckler, unfortunately. You've got you're you're you got caught back. You, you've got it stuck in your. I, I mean, do you see? Be honest. Do you think Austin Eckler rebounds at all in value, even if at the end of the season he goes to a different team? I mean, he's a special player. Like, I don't want to, you know, like him as a human. Like, I believe in him as a human being. So, do I think he can have some really good games, mostly based on touchdown? Like, let me ask you a question. Actually, end the season. Sorry, I don't want you to get too far. How many yeah. points on your fantasy team and yacht club scoring? And maybe you can add this in the offseason. Do you get for your player being a nice guy? I'm I'm not saying he's a nice guy. I'm saying he's an <laughs> impressive human. Okay. Yeah, just, Lord. Just, like the dude's really committed to the craft. Tested. He's a top one percenter. I'm just yes, no, saying. No, like, I'm just totally messing know, with you. I'm totally messing with you. All right. Yeah, this is ridiculous. Mike texted me during the show. He goes, Hey man, you may want to move off of picking. So I'm just panicking right now. I thought you see. Like maybe he's seen something Bro, in the locker room. T- you're listen. I'm one of your best friends. Mike yep. has gotten close, and you you trust his fantasy advice. We've both consulted you. You have no. I don't know what like. You might want to move off Pickens. You I might want to move off Pickens. Well, I'll bring this up. He texts you. Commitment <laughs> to the, commitment to the craft is a big thing, right? Pickens tonight, pretty, like didn't look like he was blocking. They even made a point of it in the production broadcast. Sorry to keep bringing Pickens up. I'm just venting at this point. It's just Freudian slips about it. Eckler. Uh, you know, Pickens didn't show a lot of great effort. It's like, okay, is there an attitude problem? Is there going to be a locker room issue? Eckler's the opposite problem. He takes incredible care of his body. He spends a ton of money. He he makes you believe he can be an outlier. Do I think he can finish the year with a couple multi-touchdown gains? I think it's possible, but I wouldn't bet on it. I think it is the end. I think we're seeing it. And even if he has flashes on a different team, much like Ezekiel Elliott did, you're not going to be mad if you were able to move off or you probably can't move off him now. You probably just have to hold him because he's, he's like you said, he's, he's cooked. I mean, you know, would you, I would 22 on keep trade cut. So yeah, yeah, he's on my naughty list and I'm shipping him. Off. If I can get an early second, 
in yeah. early single early second. If you're I contending, think, I don't think you should do that. I, I mean, well, if you that's through, fair. If you're contending, that's fair. Yeah. If you're contending next year, I, I just think that imagine he goes to the Chiefs and he's a third down back again. You know, he is the type of guy that could like you you cross a threshold of, OK, the production he could get me is worth more than the reroll. Like you yeah. should have sold him at the end of last year, in my opinion. You should have sold yeah, him when you get one more year on, you know, the upside of the of, of the defending RB1 on the year. So with a brilliant offensive mind and Kellen, uh, Kellen Moore coming to town. But yeah, I would sell him what I would try to do. Okay. I would try to do a Raheem Mostert in a second for for um, Austin, Austin Eckler. Because, I mean, That's rolling sweet. the dice with, with Raheem Mostert, you, it's the same chances of getting a boom game from Austin Eckler, honestly. Yeah. Maybe yeah. I mean, Latavius Murray is still in the league, and he's he's in his mid-30s. So <laughs> That's you just never know. My, my running back, who deserves to be on the nice list, wasn't on any list that I cared about at the start of the season. And certainly for Dynasty – presented i don't want to say a conundrum but he was just someone i was like okay cool he was in the running back dead zone in redraft leagues he's not someone uh that i i just wasn't excited about him i don't think there was enough hype around him there's a couple people like oh he's a my guy and the way he started the season didn't make you kind of pay attention either and i'm realizing i have a theme here for tampa bay buccaneers but the wide receiver the running back who was on the nice list for me is rashad white we're talking about a 20 feet, 24 year old running back who's currently running back six on the season. He can do it on the ground. He can do it through the air. Really became consistent after week six. He started the season running back 38, then he running back nine. It was predominantly because it's like, okay, he scored a touchdown, had a couple catches. And then it was running back 39, running back 20, running back 37, running back 16. But then he's been on a tear running back 11, running back one, running back 12, running back 14, running back 18, running back 10. These are all obviously super usable games. And he's never, he's not the guy that's, I mean, he does have a running back one finish, but that 10, 12, 11, 18, just consistently finding production. It's rare to find workhorse running backs and it's rare to find them at a price you can afford. If you have Rashad, you couldn't trade Rashad White for Najee Harris straight up last year. Oh, no. You would look like a genius if you had done that, right? You couldn't trade uh, Rashad White for, heck, Cam Akers. You'd look like a genius if you had done that. You know, J.K. Dobbins, genius. So, like, the thing about Rashad White is he is – not that he's an out that much of an outlier as a player, but in the dynasty space, he's kind of an outlier. He's a middle-tier running back that hit on his value. He's only valued at keep uh, at running back 14 on keep trade cut. So he's still to me, does that present a buy low? I think it does. In a landscape that the running back position is incredibly unsure, he is kind of flying under the radar still because it's not these incredible boom games that you see. Like Kyron Williams is going to get so much more offseason hype than Rashad White is. And Rashad White is going to have collectively a better body of work at the end of the season if he stays healthy. Because Kyron Williams has missed some time, it's gonna you're just gonna be more questions. So Rashad White is not only on my nice list, he's also, if you're a contender next year, on my trade four list. Love that. I love Rashad White. And I think this is another reminder when you're going through the process of scouting rookies, and we'll get into all that in the offseason. But Rashad White was RB3 in that class for a lot of people. And it was because he was yep. one of the only running backs that possessed the three down capabilities capability yeah he can run like we've seen him run between the tackles and he can catch mm -hmm. the ball what we saw last year in that offense is tom brady loved he loved him some lombardi lenny lenny he mm -hmm. loved him and that was yeah, taken away from lenny. rashad white we only saw yeah. rashad white sparingly on third down most of the time and then leonard Fournette would actually get the carries now we're seeing him get this workhorse back role and he's actually producing with it and it shouldn't be as much of a surprise honestly, because he was a very talented back. But it's, again, this reaction that we have as Dynasty players is if we don't see someone produce right away, we're over them. And it's like we should really not be so quick to move off of someone because it was all off season. They didn't do anything that showed us that they were worried about other than, no, they brought in Sean Tucker, and he, was, he wasn't even drafted. He was an undrafted rookie. So they did nothing but show us that they believed in Rashad White. Well, yeah, but I think the community, especially the way season started, the community was out on it. And so it's sure. it's just funny how, how important first impressions are. Um, is there – next year's Rashad White, could it be Kendra Miller? Is that someone that like – or could it be Tank Bigsby? Like is there someone right now Bigsby. 
Do you think it could be Bigsby? No, no. I mean, because yes, Rashad White was a third round pick, so we're talking around the same area as right. the Kendra Millers, the Tank Bigsby's. I'm just saying, um, is there a rookie running back who hasn't done anything this season because of situation that you yeah. believe in the way people like that we shouldn't be forgetting about? Maybe trading for Tajay Spears. Yeah, Tajay Spears I, to I me like- is the one that's most likely to have because Derrick Henry. I don't know. I, I, it's hard for me to believe that Tennessee doesn't move off of him because their whole offense is predicated right. on him right now. And he's just older, yeah. getting banged up, yada, yada, yada. We've seen Tajay Spears come in and he's done well. It's kind of similar to what we saw with like when Rashad White got in last year. I don't think anyone was like, oh, this is a terrible running back. He just never got That's run. That's true. That's so I think Tajay Spears is in a similar situation. So if I had to put my money on any of, any of those third round, not not including Zach Charbonnet from this past year, but the third round running backs, right? I would say probably a Tajay Spears. Okay. Yeah. And he's the only one that kind of fits the label, even though he's a little bit more known because it's, you're more aware of a cliff with, with uh, Derek Henry that well, but I guess, I guess a lot of people knew that Leonard Fournette was there. You still have to buy in and, and take the risk with a Tajay Spears. So, well, this has been the dynasty exchange. Hopefully your Christmas list, your naughty and nice is far more fun to make and you don't have to relive all of the disappointing players that have wounded either your team or different separate takes that you've had throughout the season. Like it's been for us. Um, We will catch you guys on Monday, uh, reacting to another great Monday Night Football game. This has been the Dynasty Exchange. Dynasty the king, uh, king, uh.